okay, I'm gonna run away to Los Angeles. I'm gonna find Kim Fowley. I'm gonna find Rodney Bingham. How did you meet Rodney the first time? I stalked him. I'm the angriest girl in America. Not her, not her, me. And you know what? I'm gonna prove it by giving my band a fairly obscene name that's gonna limit me by the time I'm 27. So I'm stuck with her. He likes things with hooks. He likes things that are catchy. He likes things that are buzzy. He likes good looking English boys. You know, he gets the joke about almost every good band. And he's there if you've got, he just has an aesthetic. Did I have a difficult? Yeah, I grew up in a teepee in Oregon. My dad gave me acid when I was four. He was like the Grateful Dead drug dealer. Is this, an, is this all right, this number of people yeah, didn't record me? Yeah, just a lot, yeah, everyone's Mark. fine. Are you rolling? Yeah. I don't know if you've ever seen these. I thought you might find these funny. Was that Brian? No, Wilson? it's Ronnie and Elvis. Who, but who's that? I'm not sure who they are. Oh. <laughs> oh my God, look at Rodney and Hendrix. That's hot, all right. Cool. So um, who is Rodney Bingenheimer? Well, you know, when you are, when you are, he is, you know what, you gotta close the door, cause I'm gonna show okay. my fade down on my side. Okay, Tommy right. and Chris, Chris, could you leave please? Huh? Or, could, could you guys just step out, please? I just really want to focus and, and, okay. and do this because I've had such a Tommy, could you step day out and I want to give you my best. Okay. Okay, thanks right. so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for respecting my privacy. Sure. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, so sorry. Who is Rodney Bingenheimer? Um, he's sort of when you're growing up in LA, which I ran away down here when I was really young, and I um, actually, uh, Michael Stipe also did this, and we come from very different backgrounds, but both wrote letters to Kim Fowley um, around the same time, like, save me. His was save me from my army brat existence in Georgia, mine was save me from Portland, Oregon, um, you know, and in running away to, I ran away to Hollywood. I ran away to Hollywood, and, uh, he, and he really, his show really, number one, uh, affected my aesthetic uh, musically completely. Um, my whole Jones for Sugar Pop um, literally comes directly from him. I mean, I was very receptive to it. You know, I grew up on the raspberries and whatever, but his taste in punk was also like my taste in punk. He likes things with hooks. He likes things that are catchy. He likes things that are buzzy. He likes good looking English boys. You know, like he likes, he gets the joke about almost every good band and he's there if you've got he just has an aesthetic and the aesthetic it's all over our last record it's all over celebrity skin it's it's just like more raspberries more eric carmen you know which some people say is my paul's boutique and i'm allowed to have one um you know at least mine went platinum but uh but uh you know i mean that that record is definitely my homage to to sugar pop and that that aesthetic was formed a lot by rodney's not only taste in pop which is very present but taste in, in punk rock so i'm gonna have a drag don't smoke how, how did you meet rodney first time i stalked him um he used to go to denny's um uh, by the guitar center you knew that he would go to denny's on thursday night and sunday night and that's where you could find him and so i uh I dropped off a tape. And you played it? He played it instantly. He's the first person that ever played us, ever. Who is Kim Fowley? Kim Fowley was, uh, <laughs> he's kind of the, he, I've never met Kim Fowley. I was never foxy enough to be at, be at the Odyssey or be at some club and be approached by Kim Fowley. And you know you're like a foxy girl in LA that Kim Fowley thinks he can make it to a rock star in the, in the, late 70s, early 80s, um, when I was a teacher. Pretty well, I first ran him right way down here when I was 13. But I did have foxy friends that were approached by him. Hey, I'll make you a rock star. He was the manager of the Runaways. He did a lot of solo records. He uh, he was a part of Bomp, I think. he had a, There was something on L, uh, LA, Bomp called LA Confidential, and it was all Kim Ball Valley bands. But a lot of the bands featured girls, like Venus and the Razor Blades, and um, the first Runaways Single actually was um, Michael, Michael, the girl from the Bangles was the singer. The bass player in the Bangles was the singer. It's called Summer Lawns. I own it on vinyl. Um, and uh, 
so that's who Kim Fowley was. Kim Fowley would like discover you if you were, I mean, the first record I saw other than Patti Smith where there were girls was, was the Runaways record up at the Crystal Ship over on the corner of 32nd and Burnside in Portland and I just shoplifted it. I couldn't, I had no money so I had to steal it, but it was this incredibly compelling idea. Wow, only boys do this. That's not true. Girls can play football too.